In the last video, we showed you a demonstration by which Henry Cavendish believed that he had discovered phlogiston. He did it by putting metals into acids, and when the metal dissolved into the acid, it released a gas which was flammable and lighter than air, and he mistakenly identified it as phlogiston. Now in those days, chemists believed that the shiny form of metals was not the elemental form. Iron, for example, was believed to be a combination of rust and phlogiston, and it was rust that they thought was the element. Now with that in mind, in 1774, a man named Joseph Priestley did an experiment in which he believed he discovered a way of subtracting phlogiston from the atmosphere. It was believed that small amounts of phlogiston were always in the atmosphere because as things burned it released it and so that phlogiston went into the atmosphere. And Priestley believed that he could remove phlogiston from the atmosphere by using mercury. Now mercury is unique from other metals in two ways. First of all, it's liquid at room temperature. That is very unusual. Other metals are solid at room temperature. Secondly, mercury in its ore form, which is red, does not have to be heated up very hot in order to turn into its metallic form. Priestley discovered this when he shined a magnifying glass on some red mercury ore. When he did this, he was amazed to find that the red ore form of mercury quickly turned into metallic mercury. And a gas was produced, a gas which he thought was phlogiston-free. Because remember, when the red form turns into the metallic form, everyone believed that the mercury was absorbing phlogiston from the atmosphere. Priestley was surprised by two things that happened when he heated mercury ore, as we can see at the bottom of this test tube. First of all, with very little heat, he even used a magnifying glass to do it, the mercury ore quickly turned into its metallic form as a condensed tube and dropped down to the bottom of the pile as seen here. It would take thousands of degrees to do the same thing to rust, to turn it into its metal. Secondly, he noticed that the reaction produced a large amount of mysterious gas, which he collected much like here in the test tube on the left. When he collected sufficient volumes of the gas, he tested it. Here we see a test tube that has the gas collected in the experiment and we're going to place it over a glowing wooden splint and watch how it promotes combustion. This amazed Priestley. Now, more than ever, he believed that the phlogiston model was correct. Priestley had three questions that seemed to be answered by his mercury experiment. The first one was, why is it that when something is burning and placed in a closed container, that it quickly extinguishes. I'll do it again. Burning, closed container, it quickly extinguishes. Well, his new model was that there's a buildup of phlogiston in the jar, and when the air in the jar becomes saturated with phlogiston, no more can be released from the burning object, so the flame goes out. Seems reasonable. The second thing that he realized was that after experimenting with putting burning candles under sealed glass jars and experimenting with live animals such as mice in a sealed glass jar, he discovered that candles burned longer and mice lived longer when the air was his new deflogisticated air, the air that was created from the mercury experiment. When he filled the jar with that type of air, the candle burned much longer, up to four to five times longer, and the mouse lived much longer too. He also uh, discovered that when you put plants in the jar and seal it with a mouse, the mouse lived indefinitely, and the candle burned much longer than without the plant. So he thought that plants somehow had a role in cleaning the air of phlogiston. And the third thing that made Priestley excited was that when you take Cavendish's phlogiston and his dephlogisticated air and put them together and ignite them, violent explosions occur. Now, this was so interesting because it seemed to back up the idea that phlogiston and dephlogisticated air work very well together to promote flammability. Watch this YouTube video. It shows what happens when you ignite a balloon filled with what they thought was phlogiston and dephlogisticated air. 
So here we have three balloons. The white balloon is filled with what Cavendish thought was phlogiston made by putting metals into acids. Watch what happens when the flame is brought near the white balloon. Now, a flame will be brought near the red balloon, which is filled with Priestley's gas, the gas he called deflogisticated air made from mercury. It popped, but no flame resulted. The blue balloon is a mixture of the two. Watch the difference. A significantly greater explosion. So Priestley and Cavendish thought that they were getting closer to the truth about what caused things to burn and what caused chemical reactions. But there was one problem with the model a big problem. It turns out that when the red mercury turns into the silver liquid mercury, the silver mercury which was believed to be absorbing phlogiston actually weighed less than the red powder. And if it was absorbing phlogiston it should have weighed more. Now they dismissed this problem by saying that maybe phlogiston is, has a negative weight or is lighter than air. But another man named Antoine Lavoisier from France was not satisfied with this answer, and his measurements determined that phlogiston was hydrogen, and he named oxygen, which is what Priestley thought was dephlogisticated air. And in the next video, we'll show you how Lavoisier did this.